What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're talking about Paris Corner fragrances. So my humble little collection of Paris Corner fragrances is ever evolving almost on a month to month basis and uh, my top 10 seems to change from time to time. Some aren't going anywhere. Not in the foreseeable future anyways. But a few managed to jump in and out of the list more so jump in to knock some other ones out and that's what happened here and I felt it was time to revamp kind of what's been my favorites what I like to pull the cap on and sniff all the time because I have like 1500 fragrances I don't wear everything all the time but I do sniff stuff every day because I just love fragrances obviously so here's my current 10 favorites that I believe if you're looking for some great affordable clone options you might want to check these out stay tuned So before we dive into this, all these can be found by the good folks over at Aroma Concepts down in the link below with a 10% off code if you are interested. Obviously, them having, you know, having been where pretty much all of these have come from, literally all but one of them have come from Aroma Concepts. That has nothing to do with what I think about the fragrances. These are just the 10 that I've been enjoying the most. So check them out down below if you're interested. Let's get into the 10. Might as well start with what I'm wearing today, wearing right now on my skin. This is what sparked the video topic idea in the first place, is Pandora Scents Cheruto Tobacco Vanille. So this is, no secret, it's Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. Uh, interesting what my wife had to say. She's She doesn't not like it, but she also doesn't really like it either. And she said, ooh, cinnamon, po cinnamon potpourri was what I got when she gave me a hug after I had applied it. I didn't take that as a compliment. I also didn't take that as super negative either, but I absolutely adore it. Uh, to the point, this is one of those rare clones that it doesn't make me feel like I need Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille. Sure, Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille is better than this. I'm not saying that the clone's better than the original. That's rare, but I like this to where I'm fine with it because I don't always wear it. Typically fall, maybe going into winter is the only time that I'm interested in these heavily spiced tobacco scents in the first place. So I'm good with having Paris Corners version because it's a really good version. It's got a little bit of a sweet, creamy vanilla, aromatic, leafy, dry, a bit herbal and earthy with a nice peppered, cinnamony, as she said, type of warm spice to it. I quite like it and it performs really well. So this it's this fragrance's fault that we're doing this video today in the first place. It's the one that gave me the idea. It's Pandora Scents Cheruto Tobacco Vanille. What I appreciate about this one most is that it's kind of like the third flanker to Raja Parfum's Apex. It's Vertex. So why do I say it's like the third flanker? Because it doesn't smell exactly like the EDP or the Parfum. It's got all of the fruitiness from the Parfum with more freshness than either of them offer. It's not the strong, it's the weakest performing of the two originals versus this. But even in that six, seven, eight hour range, it's still totally fine. More so six to seven hours on my skin. I actually did a full review on this one not that long ago. We're spraying it. Because it just smells so good. It has that dense, earthy, green, spiced smell, woodsy. Not super smoky, but the smoke nuance is there from Apex's DNA. But it's just so much more fruity. Citruses and pineapple, all that stuff going on that's kind of lacking in the Eau de Parfum, but very prominent in the higher oil concentration parfum. It's kind of weird how the fruitiness shines more in the higher oil concentration, but here you get all that fruitiness with more of a fresh green, fresh spicy type of feel. Uh, kind of like if Apex had an Eau Fresh flanker, this would kind of be what it would be, I would think. Not traditional Eau Fresh performance, but compared to those two originals, this would be the Eau Fresh. Hope you follow that thought process and uh, kind of path of where I was trying to walk this fragrance because that's how I feel about it. I quite enjoy this one. I think it's a great release from them. This is more, I think, inspired by than direct clone of because it has its slight differences and overall changes to the comp composition without changing that it's clearly going down the path of Roger Parfum's Apex. Definitely one I encourage you to try. This is a good one. It's Vertex. Now, of the 10 in this video, this is the one I pretty much reach for the most. I love this fragrance. It's fun. It's happy. It's vibrant. It's even in the name. Vibrant Vetiver Delight. No secret if you're a regular on this channel how much I love this fragrance. The color of this bottle, 
is what it smells like. It smells like Sprite. Even though it's bergamot and not lime, it smells like lemon lime soda. The little bit of spice and white floral kind of gives off like the slight soapiness to the neroli with a little bit of this spicy woodsy green feel that I get. Gives me kind of the carbonation feel that I'm saying of the lemon lime soda. This is such a great daytime hot weather scent. I've been wearing it lately out the shower here and there because it's a brilliant refresher when you're fresh out of the shower. I love this fragrance. I wholeheartedly love this fragrance. This might be my favorite. I think this is my favorite Paris Corner fragrance. Over some of the other ones that are definitely in here that you're hoping to see and or expecting to see, they're definitely in here. Don't get me wrong, but this is just such a happy fragrance for me. It's, it's one of those put a smile on your face type of aromas. It's that damn good. If I was ranking this, this would have been number one. Even though it might say top 10, I, I typically don't rank my top 10s unless I specify in the beginning. This isn't ranked because this would definitely be the last fragrance at number one if we were. Because it's just so good. It's one of the best fresh vetiver citrus fragrances I've ever smelled. Vibrant Vetiver Delight, which by the way, it's supposed to be a clone of Ball de Freak, but I don't think it smells exactly like Barreto's Ball de Freak. I actually like this more. Now, I've never smelled YSL Baby Cat, but Rifakat, I believe is how you say that, Rifakat, the Amir range. This is a good one. This is a good one. I had an interesting comment talking about just how some kind of ridiculous like vomit or foul smell or whatever funk. They said outlandish. I mean, I'm sure they just don't like the fragrance, but it's a beautiful, creamy, woodsy, spicy, smoky fragrance. That's the main accords here. Pink pepper, black pepper. Creamy, thick vanilla. A lot of olibanum, like very strong incense smell with a sharp cedar wood. Pink pepper, black pepper combo is magic in this fragrance. A little on the masculine side, but nothing that I don't think every woman can enjoy. I think it's a perfectly unisex fragrance with a slight tinge lean to the masculine side. Performance is really good on this one. I think this one's been gaining some ground with some hype here in the online community. Thick base glass, quality build. Cap's nothing special. Atomizer does a good job, but the fragrance smells really good. Like I said, I haven't smelled the original. It must be mind-blowingly good because the clone, just as a standalone, is an awesome fragrance. I think this is one of the best fragrances Paris Corner has ever put out. It had to be on this list. This is one of the fragrances I was referring to that I think some of you were anticipating seeing because it deserves to be here. It is absolutely one of my favorites from the house because I think it's one of the best releases. Clone of YSL Baby Cat. This is Rifakat. Now, one I haven't reached for since the summer because this is summertime in a bottle. I actually wear this more than what it's cloning because this is one of the most accurate clones to the original it's cloning that I've ever smelled. It's Cahila Platinum. It is cloning Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau Eau de Toilette. Bergamot Coconut Tonka Bean, same note breakdown, smells the same, performs about the same. I might get a little bit more life out of Le Beau. I get about, you know, eight, nine hours out of that, where I get six, seven going into eight hour range out of this. Just not as loud as Le Beau. Oh, we're gonna fill this air. I love the Le Beau DNA. The Le Beau DNA is my favorite from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Jean-Paul Gaultier, I don't think you'll anybody will see this video from y'all, but if you do, we need Le Beau Elixir. Because the original EDT and Le Parfum is amazing. And based on Paris Corner's work, I would need their version of it too. Because Cahila Platinum's that jam. 80 ml, it's like half the price of getting a 4.2 ounce of Le Beau Eau de Toilette. It can extend the life of that. It's like I have two bottles, basically, um, of Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau Eau de Toilette. It has that juicy, sweet bergamot smell. The sweetness is intensified by that powdery tonka bean, obviously, with that you know, very much summer beach vacation, slight sunscreen vibe, more of a sweet coconut feel because of this tonka bean, of that coconut, a little powdery. It's fun and lively. It's such a great fragrance, and it smells pretty much exactly like Le Beau. So, yeah, of course this had to be here. Very seasonal fragrance for me, though, and we're out of season right now. Kahila Platinum Clone of Le Beau ET. Now, this is another one that I was referring to that people are probably anticipating seeing because... It's that jam, guys. Vintage Dior Homme Intense. Camaro Homme Intense. Pandora Sense line. This is one of my favorite pickups of the year, especially when it comes to the affordable Middle Eastern brands, just clone pickup in general. This is that jam. 
beautiful waxy iris smell. But it's not super sweet like recent versions of Dior Homme Intense. Because like I have the 2011 version that went from 2011 to 2019. I believe it was 2011. I have that version. It's very sweet. I heard 2020 is the same fragrance, just rebottled. So th that one's very sweet too. Whereas it's still sweet. There's more of a woodsy tone to this one. Even a little touch of leather. Has that muskiness to it, even though I don't remember that even being in a note breakdown. But it has a little muskiness to it. But the star of the show is that waxy makeup bag smell, that fantasy iris note. They really captured it here. Great performer, too. Uh, this is one of those fragrances I love to just pull the cap and sniff it. I got a ton of fragrances that I do that with, and this is one of them. Because it's a very formal scent profile, and I don't have a lot of situations like that. I'm super seasonal and situational, as a lot of you know. Some of you may be hearing this for the first time. I'm super seasonal and very situational. And once I dub something great for one particular thing, it's all I wear it for. So this, I need a dressier occasion. I'm not just going to wear this casually. It's, it's just too classy. But damn, it smells good. They did a really good job. Bravo Paris Corner, because... It's a great clone of old versions of Dior Homme Intense. This is Pandora Scents Camaro Homme Intense. Now, as far as I know, this is an original. And it's very much a beautiful, watery, citrus, juicy, floral, musky, slightly aquatic fragrance. A lot of notes. A lot of notes for Kissa from Paris Corner. Love the bottle, too. Very much a summertime floral. It's not too heavy, but it's a little heavy, but I love this bottle. The bottle is magnificent. With that metal plate on the front it has that concave design cap is plastic that doesn't hold to it but the scent man there it is lang a lang rose some white florals i believe there's black currant there's lemon there's all kinds of fruity citrus smell like it's a little bit of a sweet citrus feel but still has that mouth watering like it's literally making my mouth water watery type of uh, kind of texture to it. It's very, very fresh while still having some body because there's a lot of notes here and it's a lot of florals. It's a thick floral, but I don't think it's too feminine. It might be for some of you. For me, absolutely not. I think it's a pretty unique summer fragrance. If you like citrus florals, basically is how you can look at it. Yeah, there's musk and woods and things like that, but I wouldn't call this a woody aromatic or a citrus aromatic. I think it's more of a, a, a citrus floral Musk, maybe, I guess, would be the best way to classify this because that's the dominating factors here. Performance is well above average without being a beast. This one easily goes in the eight-hour range. Uh, and like I said, I don't think it's cloning anything. I don't know of anything that smells like this. It's pretty unique to me. Maybe some of you have know that this is a clone of something. I think it's one of their originals because they do have originals. And this one's damn good. It's absolutely worth trying. If you're a person that really enjoys fresh florals, that kind of makes this one a must try for you, especially if I could get it to focus. This is Paris Corners, Kissa. Now I gotta show some love. I think just out of nostalgia's sake, I'll always have this on this tin. I don't think it could be bumped. It, anything could get bumped from the list, but I think this would be the most difficult one to move because it's my first Paris Corner fragrance. And I started off hot with Killer Oud, Death by Oud. This was such a great pickup. I only wear this in the winter. It's not quite, season, like I said, seasonal and situational as they get when it comes to fragrances. It's not time to wear this one yet. But aromatic, spicy, leathery, woodsy, a little dry. This is a good one. Oh, this is a good one. Kind of reminds me of a slightly more synthetic One Million Golden Oud. Just a little bit, a little bit. Stronger with you, Oud. It's supposed to be a clone of Chapard's Oud Malaki. Never tried that one. This is great, though. Oh, I'm such a fan of this one. Again, those fragrances I mentioned, aside from the Chapard fragrance, same vibe and feel, similar accords, but not the same fragrance. But this was my first Paris Corner fragrance. I bought this on Amazon from Aroma Concepts store, actually. Uh, their Amazon store. So the first Paris Corner fragrance I ever got was indeed from Aroma Concepts. Uh, it's kind of funny the way that worked out, but I'm a fan. Again, I only wear this in the in the winter time. I like some pretty crisp and cool. It doesn't have to be freezing outside, but I need some cold weather to work with on these heavier, spicy, woodsy, animalic fragrances. And that's when I'm going to bust this one out. But it's a nostalgia pick, a recent nostalgia, because it's my very first Paris Corner fragrance. And I think I started with one of their best offerings that they've ever put out, at least for my taste. If you haven't tried this one, you really should. It's Killer Oud. Death by Oud. 
Now what I appreciate about this next one is it's a clone or their interpretation of one of my favorite versatile fragrances ever made. Highly recommended fragrance on this channel. It's cloning Mancera Cidrat Boise. This is Cidrat Essence. So the reason I enjoy this so much is not just because it smells like Cidrat Boise, but it smells like a tweak and twist on Cidrat Boise. So this is more citric and less fruity sweet. So Cidrat Boise, yeah, you get the sharp lemon, but you also get black currant and fruity notes. It's a fruity sweet, darker, you know, heavily fruity type of opening. Whereas this is more like lemon, bergamot, sharp citrus than it is sweet and fruity. And then with Cidrat Boise, it dries down to kind of a dry wood, soft leather type of smell. Whereas here, it's musky. It dries down a bit musky. So this is really like a fresh flanker in some ways to Cidrat Boise. Because it's not one-to-one. -one. It's like 80%. Like it's clear they were going for Cidrat Boise. But it's a fresher Cidrat Boise. More citrus aromatic, musky take on it less fruity sweet leathery and woodsy still has those elements just not near as much and that's what i love about this one this isn't one of my first pickups from the house huge fan of this one huge fan of this one uh if you have Cidrap Cidrap Boise, sure super redundant you can get Cidrap Boise for a good price but if you want a more high heat friendly version of it that's why i like this one it's a super high heat version if there was such a thing as the summer flanker to Cidrat Boise, Paris Corner actually made it. And it's called Emir Cidrat Essence. Now this last one, just artistically, I enjoy it so much. This is way too heavy for just any random old casual wear. I need cold weather and I need something going on. I need to be going somewhere. Have, you know, some kind of event, get together kind of thing where I want to show out a bit. Because this fragrance shows out. This is Lord Despoir Ombre. Their clone of Louis Vuitton's Ombre Nomade. It's funny, when I did a review on this one, I've had people talk about how great it is. I've had people tell me it smells absolutely nothing like Ombre Nomad. You're lying. and all the, it's People on the internet, boy, they... Something. So I have indeed sprayed an Ombre Nomad on my hand, and this is quite close to it. Obviously, it doesn't match the quality, but for what the quality is for all of these, this is one of the higher quality ones that they, that they created. They use really good materials here. As far as the oils, good raw materials. Well, I shouldn't have sprayed twice because it's so damn strong. But this stuff actually smells of quality. Love the magnetic cap, too. Really, really good quality. Oud, a little fruity rose. Has a patchouli smell to it. Touch of smoke. Elegant. Kind of a mass appealing oud smell. Not a ton of those out there for what it is. It's one that's pretty easy to like, I think. That's how I view it. Oh, it smells so good. There's certain oud notes, even if it's not the most natural oud on the planet, because I'm not sure just how natural this oud is, but man, it smells good to me. It's not for everyone. This is a polarizing one, but I've always found it to be a great interpretation of Louis Vuitton's Ombre Nomade. Try it for yourself if you're interested. I know there's other clones out there of Ombre Nomad that I haven't tried, but this one's pretty damn accurate to me, and the quality's really good, so it makes me have zero desire to explore any other ones because it's a situational fragrance for me in the first place. I don't need a bunch of fragrances that smell like this. This one does the trick. Man, so if you like Oud, you might want to look into this one. It's Lord Despoir Ombre, their clone of Ombre Nomad from Louis Vuitton. Well, that's the 10. Some of these you were expecting, some of these you were not. Some stuff had to get left off that's really good, like Eternal Coffee. Great original from them. I would have loved to put that on here, but something had to get the axe. There's reasoning behind each one of these being here on why I like them more than certain fragrances. Um, if I would have did a 15 or a 12, Eternal Coffee would have definitely been here. That's the one that was the hardest for me to leave off of the list because Trillium. Love that fragrance. Like, there's some really good stuff that I have for Paris Corner, but not everything can be the top 10, right? And until next time, do me a quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. How many of you have tried any of these? What do you think about them? Do you have any of these? Are they great for you? Okay for you? They were a pass. You didn't like them? Definitely let me know down in the comments. Again, if you're interested in picking any of these up, there's links down below with a discount code to Aroma Concepts in two different markets over in Europe as well as here in North America. And uh, until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these 10 and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later.
Have a good one, guys. 